on everyone so LeBron James is officially back and although the first game didn't go how we had hoped right we ended up losing the Chicago Bulls LeBron for some parts I looked a little rusty but for his first game back I thought he did a great job much better than most people would have done and as we continue over these next seven games I expect LeBron James to continue to pick it up right he should only improve as we get closer uh you also saw a lot of guys just didn't play up to par, right? And there were several occasions where uh, the Lakers just kind of went into like default mode with LeBron James. Uh, but even still, when LeBron was on the court, they were a plus four. When he was off the court, they're like a minus 19. So he definitely had an impact. And again, as the chemistry builds, as this team gets healthier, as we move closer to the playoffs and some of these games get the revenge game, in Chicago, uh, we get ready to ramp up a, a five-game road trip. Uh, we're really going to need uh, LeBron to, to return to form, which I'm not really worried about LeBron at all. I think LeBron will be fine. He'll fit in. He'll have those monster games. He'll take over if he needs to. He'll get people involved. He's going to be LeBron James. Again, not concerned. But one big factor that we didn't have in the first Bulls game, uh, which may or may not have changed the outcome, but... It will, in my opinion, going forward and really impact this Lakers roster is the return of D'Angelo Russell, right? D'Lo, he missed the game. I missed the last two games uh, with hip soreness. Hopefully, he will be back for the next Bulls game. Uh, we could really use him. He's get three days off between the last Bulls game and this Bulls game. And D'Lo returning is going to be massive. Now, it's going to be massive for a multitude of reasons. One, he's a guy that gets you, you know, 20 to 30 points a game on any given night. We've seen him do that on several occasions. Uh, he's a guy that can also help in the playmaking duties, right? Guy that can also play on the ball. But his ability with the Lakers this season to play off the ball has been huge. It's been extremely massive. Uh, obviously, he is a three-level scorer. Guy that can knock down the three ball. A guy that can operate in the mid-range and is just butter from the mid-range. Got a guy that can get to the basket, create his own shot, change a pace, uh, tempo. Uh, he's kind of he's more closer to, to James Harden than he is Russell Westbrook, right? Uh, he's very methodical, kind of operates almost like he's moving in slow motion in times. But it's such a nice change of pace as opposed to like a LeBron James or like a Dennis Schroeder, who's just really quick, fast pace. Uh, but D'Lo has also, again, been so good off the ball for the Lakers and he gets his shot off so quickly and to be able to have a guy like him who can consistently uh, knock down shots whether it's in the mid-range and a pick and pop set or from the three-point line LeBron's driving and kicking whatever D'Lo is going to have that impact also last time we saw D'Lo and LeBron play they actually looked really good together right? They were running pick and rolls and all kinds of different sets. And it was just working and it was working very well. And I imagine that that will continue. I think D'Lo and his ability to knock down shots immediately makes him a threat, immediately makes it hard and puts pressure on the defense. So when LeBron is driving, you cannot leave D'Lo open. He's going to make you pay every time. He's also a guy that can close games down the stretch, can hit big shots, is not afraid of the moment. That is massive too, right? Because you know LeBron, uh, especially in crunch time, yes, he's capable and has hit some big shots in his career and can take over games and do what he needs to do. But he also likes to make the right play, also likes to look for a guy that is open and can knock down the shots, which D'Lo can. So in those tight games down the stretch, you got a guy in D'Angelo Russell who he's already hit big shots for the Lakers and is capable of doing so. He's hit game winners, right? He's done it all. And that is just very valuable. Anytime you're missing a, you know, 17 to 20 point per game player, that is hurtful, right? For any team, any team missing a guy uh, to the level of D'Lo is going to feel that impact. But D'Lo, once he gets back to the court, hopefully sooner rather than later, and we can kind of get this run uh, of seven games, really think it's off to the races, right? D'Lo being that third option, you can make an argument he's the best third option in the league for everything that he's able to do. Again, play on the ball, play off the ball, uh, but also be able to play make, right? LeBron wants to play off the ball a lot. And the Lakers for years now have tried 
to find a solution uh, for LeBron James, right? That's why they originally got Dennis Schroeder after they won the NBA championship. That's why they ended up getting, uh, you know, Russell Westbrook via trade, right? Because the idea was like, okay, well, one, when LeBron's not in the game, you have a guy that could be a playmaker and provide a lot of what LeBron can, but also LeBron could play off the ball more, uh, run, you know, just different sets, different looks, kind of uh, utilize LeBron in different ways, right? Uh, so D'Lo, he's all the things that Russell Westbrook isn't. Uh, and same thing about Dennis Schroeder, right? Like Dennis Schroeder, he can knock down the shot from time to time, but he's not really like a major threat, right? Like you're okay with D'Angelo Russell taking eight threes a game. You're not really okay with Dennis Schroeder taking eight threes a game, right? If he's taking eight threes a game, you're a little concerned, unless he's just shooting the lights out, uh, which can happen. He's still an NBA player. But D'Lo, you can trust him to always be on the court with LeBron and make right plays, uh, make right decisions. He doesn't really turn the ball over a bunch. Uh, He's a guy that can go get you 30 and 9. We know this because he's done it for the Lakers already, right? I mean, the Knicks game, he had like, what, 33, 6, and 9, something like that? That's pretty good, right? And so he's going to make things so much easier for this Lakers team and for LeBron James. He made things easier for LeBron James before the injury, right? And that was just like a three-game sample size. Now, we're going to very likely, hopefully, get a seven-game sample size, which will continue to build chemistry and continue to kind of work going into the playoffs. And if that dynamic can thrive, which I think it will, it did last time, then that's just going to take us to another level, right? But also, beyond D'Lo, Beasley, I think, is another guy that's really going to benefit from D'Angelo Russell and LeBron James being on the court together. I don't think it's a coincidence that Beasley's best stretch of games with the Lakers were with both D'Angelo Russell and LeBron James on the court, right? Because now you have two guys, one in LeBron James, who's arguably one of the greatest playmakers ever, and D'Angelo Russell, who has chemistry with Beasley, who knows where Beasley likes his shot. And it gives LeBron two dead-eye high-volume shooters, right? Beasley has been struggling lately. I understand that. But once we get this team fully healthy again, you see, and you even saw it in the Bulls game. It's just Beasley didn't hit the shots early on. He started heating up uh, towards the end of the game, and hopefully that will be, hopefully that's a good sign that that starts carrying over into these other games uh, that we have coming up. But Beasley, if with him getting better looks, it increases the likelihood of him knocking down shots. Before the Bulls game, Beasley wasn't getting the best of looks, right? Teams were literally gluing guys to Beasley, and he had just a really short window to to get his shot off. Well, now, when he's not the only dead-eye shooter on the court with D'Angelo Russell and LeBron drawing all the attention that he draws and being able to move defenders off of Beasley, that's just going to open up so much more for both of them, right? D'Lo and Beasley and D'Lo's ability also, because now you have just, it's pick your poison at that point. Do we take a, do we take a chance that Beasley is going to miss a three or do we let LeBron just go and get a dunk on, on our team? Do we, you know, do we uh, worry as, you know, D'Lo's operating and navigating the defense and trying to get into, you know, the, the the pockets? Like, do we go and close in on him and potentially leave LeBron James open? Or do we trust that D'Lo's going to, you know, make a shot? And then if so, uh, you know, that the ball gets one around and now Beasley's got a wide open three, right? Like, ball movement, all of those things just constantly giving you different sets and the beauty of Beasley is he's not just like a a stand around right like you see a lot of three-point guys they just kind of stand there and they wait and they wait and they wait and they wait like Beasley's constantly moving right he's he's coming off the screens coming off picks he's you know going from one side to the other strong side a weak side weak side strong side whatever right he's constantly moving and putting pressure on the defense And when you have a guy as good and talented as LeBron James who sees the court the way LeBron James does, 
It's going to open a lot for Beasley. And in the same scope, I hope that they run a lot of those same motions with D'Angelo Russell because, same thing, D'Angelo Russell is going to be able to get a lot of clean looks. But also what he'll get, it, which Beasley got in in several games this season, but also the Bulls game, is the ability to get the ball at the three-point line and then just give you a little pump fake and then take a couple steps in, knock down the mid-range, or get to the basket, draw some contact, stuff like that. Beasley, I would like to see him not settle as much, right? Especially now with LeBron James. Because what's going to happen a lot is you're going to have LeBron driving, creating uh, the, the, the draw from the defense, and then Beasley's going to get the kick out. And yes, if you're open and you can get the shot off, get the shot off. But if you can just quick, you know, you got the catch, let the guy blow by, take a step or two in, and then knock down the mid-range, which Beasley can and is capable of doing that, that just opens up the game so much more for him. Uh, and same thing with uh, D'Lo, right? D'Lo, his ability to catch it at the three-point line, give you a little pump fake, little jab, boom, take a couple steps in, knock it down. Or, you know, same thing, same sequence, but get to the basket, maybe create some contact, or maybe get and even, you know, draw that other help defender and, and get an easy, you know, layup or dunk or something like that. Run a lot of give and goes. Uh, you can run a lot of pick and pops, pick and rolls, all that stuff. It just opens the offense tremendously. And I just can't wait to see these three on the court together. Can't wait to really just get our big three finally on the court together. LeBron James and Anthony Davis attract so much attention. And having a guy like D'Lo is going to help LeBron James and Anthony Davis so much, right? I mean, we had that one game where LeBron James and Anthony Davis both scored like 12 and 13 points and we won by like 20. <laughs> that will probably happen a lot, right? And maybe not so much this year, you know, because we only have so many games left but definitely next year these three are really going to thrive together because again D'Lo his ability to play off the ball is going to be massive uh his ability to run and operate the pick and roll with Anthony Davis as well as LeBron James is going to be really huge uh his ability to run the pick and pop with LeBron James and Anthony Davis is going to be really huge and vice versa right you can just get a heavy dose of just pick and rolls with these three and it's just like Keep going at it. Keep doing it until you can stop it, right? And especially that big little pick and roll uh, is just massive because that was the problem we had before, right? And that's the problem with LeBron and AD in that set, right? Because usually when you have a guard and a center or forward, you have that big switching on the little. Right, And then now you've created a mismatch because now you have the little that can just take the big to the hole or you have the big who you can dump it down to and now you know he has the size mismatch to go generate a bucket. Now when you have LeBron doing that, you see it a lot, is that they'll try to run the pick and roll, but LeBron's got a big guy on him usually or a bigger guy. Um, and then that guy just switches or he just stays on LeBron and they don't have to switch, right? But now, if you don't switch, you have a guy in D'Lo who could just blow by, do whatever. Like, it just, it changes everything. Get that switch. So, pick and roll is going to be a great thing. Um, D'Lo's ability to knock down the three ball. We've seen Anthony Davis have his monster games. It's just, I just really think these three are going to just feast. Really are. And hopefully they can develop the chemistry in the next seven games to, to really kind of like lead this team to a potential uh, just deep playoff run and maybe even an NBA championship. You never know. Uh, I don't think anyone would be surprised. You look at this Lakers roster and you go, yeah, this looks like a team that can win it. Um, but we'll see. Time will tell. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion, so I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? Do you think uh, D'Lo... Uh, is going to make a big impact uh, once he gets back. Do you think he won't? Do you think uh, it'll be, you know, whatever? It'll just kind of not really change much. However you feel, whatever your thoughts are, I'd love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below.